The pontoon is 200 feet long and 60 feet wide, and it's about 10 feet deep. It normally floats with about 7 feet of freeboard, as you can see in this end view. To put it into a state suitable for wind flow, the centerline tanks are filled with water, which sinks the pontoon down until the freeboard is reduced from 7 feet to about 3 feet. The wing tanks are then flooded. This has the effect of tilting the pontoon over until the surface slopes at about 1 in 10, and the windward edge is level with the water. The wind can now flow smoothly from the sea onto this gentle slope and up it. This flooding and listing are done by machinery in compartments below deck. There are three 60 kilowatt diesel generators and three 350 ton pumps, as well as a lot of other equipment. Looking down on the layout, you can see that we had an arc of sampling positions with its centre at the source which was held on a floating boom 25 feet long. The radius of the arc is 75 feet. And the appropriate part is fitted up with animals and sampling gear for each trial. If necessary, the pontoon can be swung to adjust it to the wind direction. One of the breast wires is eased off and the other pulled in. This can be done at both ends. In August 1951, we held preliminary trials in Sandown Bay, Isle of Wight. The pontoon had been towed back from Malta, and our invaluable constructor, Mr. Vincent, had, not without apprehension, flooded and listed it successfully at Portsmouth. You can see here the pontoon with the full list on and also the temporary sampling arc which was rigged for these trials. The uh, Porton engineer and naval constructor in consultation. These preliminary trials were intended to prove the general principle and were fully satisfactory. <laughs>